Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Back here with the continuation of my Thief Gold playthrough on Expert Difficulty. Today we're going to be doing Return to the Cathedral. We have to grab the eye and leave the cathedral without getting killed, so let's get into it. Uh, first thing I wanted to say before we fully get started here is that this mission is obviously going to be a little bit more complicated than, than those two simple objectives. We also have to put three ghosts to rest, so most of the mission is going to be us uh, running around the kind of monastery looking for various things that we need to, uh, you know, perform an exorcism, basically, or not really an exorcism, but, you know, putting these spirits to rest and giving us the key to get out of here, so let's get into it. So this is an undead mission, so don't even worry about buying moss arrows or broadhead arrows or rope arrows, really. Um, the ones that you get um, are probably going to be the only ones you need. I definitely recommend flash bombs and fire arrows because those work against the haunts, the zombies, and the ghosts that are in this mission, so... And right here, we just want to put the uh, earth, wind, uh, and fire, and water talismans um, in these spaces right here. Pretty self-explanatory. This will open the door. The elevator is out until you restore the power in the basement, which we're going to do here in a little bit. And basically, what I want to do here, starting the mission, is just grab... There's a lot of loot in the cathedral, and I want to grab most of it before I get to the eye, just so I have it taken care of. There is a goblet, I believe, behind this door. Yep, there it is. There's a lot of lore here, too, in the cathedral that you want to... If you want to read, you can uh, read. I haven't really been showing uh, lore in these videos, um, or cutscenes. Any story, this is just straight-up gameplay. I'm going to go on the other side. You want to be careful when you get to the uh, second floor here, which we're going to be at in a minute, because there is a zombie that walks around on the second floor on this side of the cathedral. Something to keep in mind. Grab the candlestick on the floor, the one on the table. Climb up the ladder, and there is a that scroll there just tells you about restoring the generator at the in the basement to turn the power back on and get the elevators back on. There's that zombie. There's a goblin on the floor right next to him. Make sure to grab that as well. And just to get into some uh, opinions real quick, uh, I really like this mission. It's probably my favorite of the undead missions because it just has a really quality level design. It's pretty big, but it's not overwhelmingly big like some of the other missions. And uh, I just find the whole, you know, objectives cool. Working with the, the spirit that we're going to see here in a little bit to uh, put the put the dead uh, hammerites to rest. And it's kind of neat and more of an exploration of that hammerite lore. So pretty uh, pretty cool mission, I think. I think that's the only chest that's locked on uh, this floor. There's a couple of chests and that's the only one that's locked on the second floor. Or third floor, whatever floor this is. So like I was saying, um, Part of the mission to escape from the cathedral after we grab the eye is we have to put um, three dead hammerites to rest. One of them is a spirit, and two of them are bodies that we just need to put in the grave. So one of the bodies is going to be uh, behind the store right here. So it's useful to grab this now, uh, and not have to backtrack all the way up here later on in the mission. So that's what I'm going to do uh, right now. And there he is right there. Obviously because he's dead, you don't have to worry about, you know, dropping him and killing him like uh, Bazo from Break from Cragstuff Prison or anything like that. You can freely toss his body uh, many feet like I did and not have to worry about a failed objective. So, not too bad. But you just definitely want to be careful carrying the body too far while there's enemies around because you move a lot slower while you're carrying bodies, so you don't want to be caught in a compromising uh, situation there. And there's the eye, and as you can see when you get close to it, it kind of aggroes all the enemies, which is actually what I want to happen, because I'm going to throw a flash bomb and try to kill as many of these guys as possible. Um, another objective later on in the mission too, on Expert, 
is to kill all the haunts. Uh, the haunts are those red dudes um, with swords who are kind of like, you know, guards mixed with zombies. And on expert, every single one of them needs to be killed to complete the mission. So it's good just to take care of that right now and, you know, get as many of them as possible. So. And you can see that one there. Uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't die from the flash bomb. So I'm just gonna, you know, pick him off with some arrows. Well done, thief. So now we have the eye. So now I'm going to. Uh, grab the holy water that's in this room. Uh, depending on what difficulty you play on determines how much there is. On expert there's only one. I believe on normal there's two or three. I'm not quite sure about that. And I aggroed a ghost. So those are these are by far, I think, you know, the hardest enemies in the game because they, you know, they can run pretty fast, follow you pretty far, and they shoot, you know, high damaging projectiles and they're very hard to kill. Um, it takes quite a few water arrows to put this guy down, which you're going to see me do here. Um, I thought about running, you know, because I'm just saving the arrows and saving the holy water, but he's in the doorway, so it's going to be hard to run past him and not, you know, trigger him to follow me. I want to be able to come back into the cathedral, like, safely to pick up that body later on. And I ran out of holy water there, only get 30 seconds, so... One fire arrow is going to knock out that zombie. Killed him for the same reason, just want a clear path to move this body. And that's the exit right there that you see me, the door you see me facing, that's the exit to the cathedral proper, but you still have the sort of whole like kind of monastery or compound grounds there. Okay, now we're going to go to the basement to turn the generator back on and also find the other body that we need to bury later on. And there is one ghost and one zombie down here, so you want to be mindful of that as well. Obviously the ghost is a bigger threat. Um, I've noticed the patrol route's kind of random, or at least it is for me. I've come down here and done this mission, you know, multiple times and the ghost and the zombie have been in different places, so be very cautious as you're going through the door that you're not gonna trigger anybody right away okay so this is where the second body that we need is and there's also you know three wine bottles that you can take for loot in here as well so grab those three There is a light, uh, light switch or light lever, I guess you'd say, um, at the beginning of, you know, the basement that you that I um, kind of passed, and I chose not to turn it on for that reason. You saw me there; the ghost was right near me, but because it's pitch black, you know, he just keeps on walking. So I honestly recommend not turning the lights on in the basement because you can see pretty well as long as your your gamma is up reasonably high. So I definitely recommend leaving that off so that you don't have to you get an extra advantage against uh, the ghost and the zombie. As you can see there though, the zombie uh, stumbled upon me so I had to take him out. Grab the gold, grab the two diamonds. Mm. 
You want to be careful here too because there is a zombie, a guard, and there's also a haunt that patrols in and out of that building to our left. So you can potentially have a couple different interactions here. So you want to be very careful as you're leaving the cathedral itself. And this is kind of your meeting spot with the spirit that's going to help us escape. Um, we have to do him a couple of tasks before he'll uh, give us the key to get the bomb that we need to blow up the gate to get out. So as you can see, aid the ghost, Brother Murris, to get out. Thou can start by collecting some things from me. All brothers have rosary beads, so thou need some too. Thou can borrow mine. I think I left them in my room. All right, so we're going to grab the prayer beads, which the first thing you need, and it is in this building uh, right here next to uh, the meeting spot. So pretty easy, uh, pretty brief walk. So going to be careful. Um, this building is mostly home to zombies. Um, there is a haunt, I think, that comes in and out of here sometimes, but. It's mostly going to be zombies. Make sure you grab the plate right there. And also up here is a fire arrow. I meant to take that and I accidentally grabbed the rope arrow. What happens? I did not, I'm going to mention this later once I finish the mission, but I did not get uh, anywhere close to the loot goal on this one. Um, basically, you should grab as much loot as possible because there is another buying screen coming up later on, but for the most part, everything forward is not heists, so like the need for loot is a little bit less important. I think the only mission left where you can actually buy stuff is... Uh, not the next mission, but the mission after. So I think there's only one more mission where you can actually buy uh, like things that you need, like tools for the mission. So basically from here on till the end of the game, loot's not super important. I pick stuff up, pick stuff up if I see it, but I'm not really going to go out of my way um, to do anything too crazy to get any loot because it's not really important anymore um, for the rest of the game. And the, uh, the rosary beads that we need are in this locked chest right here. If you listen to uh, Brother Maris, he'll tell you uh, the clues that, you know, he could see out his window or he could see the, the grounds from out his window, so this is the only room with a window looking outside. for thee to do as well. I needs for thou to get a holy symbol. This place is not as holy as it once was, I'm afraid, so thou might have a hard time finding one. Thou canst always make one for thyself in the tenor factory. We do it all the time and praise the builder for his works. All right, so we are going to grab the uh, holy symbol that we need. We're actually going to make it, as uh, Tiki mentioned there. If we can't find one, we can make one. So, going for the haunt, obviously, we need to kill every single one of them, and they are you know, more deadly than zombies. They pack a bigger punch, and they're faster, so I want to go for him over the zombie. And the mold that you need there is the very one, the one on the bottom row, with the very to the right. And you want to close the, the mold there on the left using the left switch. And then you're going to want to activate the uh, the filling there with the right switch. And as you can see, a haunt walked in on me. So, good thing this generator was here because 
they cannot climb, so it gives me some, uh, gives me advantage points. So two fire arrows, put them down. Open it up. And there's the holy symbol, but we still need to bless it with uh, holy water. So got to take care of that as well. Uh, while we're over here, you want to go down that little ramp right there because there is a candle that we're going to need as well that's right on top of this uh, shed right here connected to the, uh, the forge. So grab the gold pouch, grab the candle. I kind of consider that basically the same objective as the holy symbol since they're right next to each other, but it's possible to miss it. So you want to take care of that while you're here to save you some backtracking. Take the elevator down, that's why you always gotta turn the power back on. And basically there's these tunnels that run underneath all the they run under the entire compound. So this kind of is a way to go from building to building really quickly is these tunnels that you're gonna see here that I'm taking the elevator down to. And this room right here holds a secret. Actually one of the one of the ghosts that we put the rest tells you about it, but we're gonna hit it up now since we're right here. And you can either hit it with an arrow like I'm trying to do and failing, or you can just hit the button. So it's that very top right tile. And you can tell because it's slightly discolored and when you click on it, it'll click in. And this building right here is the library, so we need the prayer book as well to recite the prayer to put the ghost to rest, so we'll grab that while we're here. And there it is right there, and you're going to see me make a save right there. Anytime you uh, see the screen fade to white, I made a save and a reload. So um, I've done a few of these missions. If you've watched my previous videos, I've done some of them without saving, but other ones that are usually multi-part like this one, or they're really long like the Thieves Guild. I just couldn't do it in one go. I had to at least make one or two saves. So you're gonna see in this mission, I believe I made two saves total. So not too bad. Which actually, I think later I left, I left one of my deaths in because it was, it was pretty funny and I thought I'd leave it in because I've been taking out any of the times that I die and the missions that I save. Look forward to that coming up uh, towards the end of the video. And obviously there's a haunt right here, and he patrols this kind of storage area. Nobody else really down here besides that other zombie, so it's not really too much of a threat unless he gets you cornered. And there's two pieces of loot. There's one right there. And there's a diamond right there, and there's the chest. I wasn't sure. I... Maybe he was getting this mixed up with a different mission, but I thought there might have been one other piece of loot, but there's not, so... I know waiting for elevators is riveting gameplay.
These elevators are pretty slow, but it's a good thing they're not fast because, um, I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but I'll bring it up again. Um, they have collision, or you have collision with the elevator because everything in Thief in, in the engine of the game is given weight. Every object has actual weight, so if Garrett actually is under the elevator while it is moving, or even if he, if he clips through the elevator, which actually did happen to me in a previous mission, but if you basically collide with the elevator while it's moving, like you're, you're dead. If you're not, if you're, if you touch the elevator basically and you're not on top of it, you're dead. So I think if the elevator moved too fast, it would just be uh, constant elevator glitching. So a little tangent there, but I respect you, uh, slow elevator. I just wasn't ready to take on that font there, so I made my way back down here and also I needed to go around need to take a different route anyway so it ended up working out and this is the building where you um, bless the holy symbol that we made in the forge or the factory or whatever you want to call it there's a zombie behind that second door right there so be careful I put a mine down there and I'm going to trigger him but He's decided that he doesn't want to aggro, of course, after I put down a mine, he wants to hide in that room, so I'm trying to just coax him out of there. And finally hitting him with an arrow does it, so boom. Chunks everywhere, so grab the moss arrows, not really going to need them, but they're there, so just for the sake of OCD, I thought I'd take them. Pick the lock, no problem, since the zombie's dead. That's why I like to kill the zombie, so I can, you know, pick the lock without having to worry about him uh, eating my eating my neck. Pretty uh, cool room up here, observatory with a, you know, telescope and like a sunroof you can open up and all these fancy maps. Which can't be destroyed, as you see. And then some lure right there. And check out that skybox. Something about skies in video games I find just kind of like mesmerizing about just how they're how they're made. I don't know, they just look pretty cool to me, I don't know. Grab the uh, jewel there on the ground. Jewel, gem, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to take the elevator up here. I'm going to go right down here. This is where you get the key to the cemetery that we need to obviously bury the bodies and, uh, you know, read the final, read the prayer book and use the prayer beads on the, the tomb to put the spirit to rest. And then this leads out to the main kind of plaza. Tried to ambush the haunt there. Got him with a fire arrow, but it wasn't enough, so he actually will not follow you through here. I don't I think maybe because he thinks that the elevator is not there or he's not programmed to to kind of stand on elevators just in case that they move and that could get into some kind of wacky hijinks with like the collision and also other enemies and stuff like that, so. Have no fear, if you just stand on the elevator, he will not come and get you. Even when I know there's nothing under the under the banisters, I still destroy them just because it's Thief and, you know, even though I've done this mission like, you know, six or seven times at least, you still never know. There could be something under there that eighth time. So I use the holy water on him, uh, and I also because I'm really not far from the main plaza, so I figured that if I 
use the holy water if I can maybe get some people along the way. But as you can see, there really wasn't anybody walking here for the most part. There's the ghost, but I'm not going to have enough time to get him with just that one thing of holy water. We need to double dose him right there. I think this is the last ghost in the mission right there, so that's a huge weight off my shoulders. Not having to worry about them firing, you know, skulls at me and pretty much instantly killing me. Kablam! Take that zombie out. Making a save. Which we're not going to need. Now we have everything we need. The checklist is the candle, the prayer beads, the prayer book and the holy symbol uh, and the holy symbol of course blessed in water so once you have all those it's time to uh, put this guy to rest and obviously you want to be careful because as you can see the cemetery is just crawling with zombies um, you know it's going to be pretty difficult to kill them all if you've used your resources on the other enemies so far so you can just stand on the uh, the tombstone like I am to avoid them, so definitely recommend that instead of wasting uh, wasting bombs or arrows. Oh, Master Builder, we ask you to bless our brother and our sins. Forgive him the transgressions and the favor of the plain fire and fear and purifying spirit of God. This is kind of weird. Just a weird glitch. The zombies were like circling the tomb. They, I know they're not supposed to do that. I don't think. I mean, there's nothing that in their programming. You know, it's not a scripted. Nothing in this game is really scripted for the most part. Everything's pretty just dynamic. You know, so it was kind of weird. They just decided to look for me by uh, circling the tombstone. So kind of a cool, neat moment that was not, you know, intentional. Alright, we have put the man himself to rest, and now we need to bury the two bodies. So, one goes right there, and another goes on the other side of the graveyard, so it's time to retrieve those. You're going to see me make a save coming up right here. Actually, my mistake, it's going to be, I think, after we bury the first body, I want to say. Or maybe the second. You'll see, it'll flash to, flash to white. I don't. Uh, I struggled to kind of decide if I want to leave the deaths in or not. I know some people might find them interesting just to see like ways that you fail, but I just think as a viewer, like I just want to see a video that's as tight as possible. But if I think a death is funny or you know informative, I guess I'll leave it in. Like uh, you'll see one later that I thought was pretty funny, so I left it in. But if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or BitChute. Let me know that if you want me to uh, leave the deaths in, or you want me to take them out like I have been doing, so there won't be any, you know, fades to white. Uh, the videos will be a little bit longer if I leave the deaths in, just because, you know, dying and then, you know, reloading my save back to where I was, or walking back to where I was, it's going to take some time, but let me know if that's something you uh, are interested in seeing. Forgive the transgression of his living days, and with favor of his works in thy name. Now he's uh, in the grave and he's going to tell us about a secret that we already grabbed, so we're way ahead of him. Now 
now you can see why I decided to you know take the bodies and kind of take them to the the main plaza there towards the beginning it just saves so much time and potentially if you left a zombie or something alive or a ghost if you left the ghost alive in the cathedral you know it saves you from having to get into a potential fight and a game over maybe so definitely on expert I mean you want to save uh, yourself time if you can at, you know every opportunity now I must ask thee for one last thing. These haunts who inhabit the bodies of my brethren, they must all be killed. Oh, Master Builder. We ask all right, the so the only thing we have left is to take care of all the haunts, and I think we're only missing one. I think there's one haunt that I did not kill, but other than that, that's the uh, last thing that we have to do for uh, Brother Murris. Almost done. Take him to serve with thee in thy home where he may rest in peace. Kill all of the hammer haunts and return here for thy reward. I don't know why he reacted there. I think he reacted to the zombie, but you know, he's already dead, so the zombie really isn't gonna be able to do anything to him. There's the cut that I made. I mean he can't you know, die again, so I don't really know what the whole deal with that is, but now he's just probably, as an NPC, he's probably just uh, programmed to uh, trigger whenever there's like a, an enemy nearby. And there's another ghost, so we're going to want to avoid him. I couldn't remember, I'm kept, I came back in the cathedral because I couldn't remember if I left a haunt alive in the building or not, but I don't think I did. So that's why I came back here. Normally I wouldn't have even had, have had to come back here, but I thought maybe the haunt was in here, but he's outside, I think. Yep, there he is. I don't know exactly what his patrol patrol route is. I know he patrols like this area, you know, by the fountain there, and he also I think goes inside the building where we got the prayer beads, but I don't know exactly his full route. But uh, one fully charged blow uh, is enough to take out a haunt. So if you do, you know, manage to kind of get the drop on him, you know, just charge up that sword and you know just kill him because uh, they don't count towards you know your no kill rule on expert. You know, haunts can always be killed. And there's the key to the bomb. So, kind of a kind of an odd sort of series of events. You know, you have to get the eye. You know, the, you know, get the beads, get the symbol, the candle, the book. You know, then put the you know put the three got three uh, brothers of you know the hammerites to rest. You know, and then the spirit gives you the key to get the bomb, to plant the bomb, to open the gate. So it's kind of a it's kind of a rigmarole that this mission sends you on, but it's part of the kind of the brilliance of it. It is in this locked door right here that we saw earlier we couldn't open. So there's the bomb, there's the fire arrow that we need to trigger the bomb, and there's the instructions for the bomb in case you don't know how to use it. So it's pretty it's pretty self-explanatory, but it can be kind of fiddly. Um, basically we just have to throw the bomb in front of the gate and then light it on fire, but I've had problems in this mission where you know, I've had the bomb right up against the gate, you know, in various different positions, you know, you know near the sort of near the um, you know, near the where the two doors meet, I've had it on the left side, I've had it on the right side, and for some reason the door still doesn't open. So it's it seems like it's like kind of touchy at times. So I do kind of recommend making a save before you plant the bomb, which I'll show you where here in a second. But yeah, make a save before you actually do it, because if you f mess up, I think that's pretty much you have to restart. There's no other bombs. There's only one. So and that's the gate right there that we need to escape. That's the library there, just showing to show the front door. I didn't go through the front door the first time. Made a save right there, just in case. And here's, you see the death coming up here? I thought I was far enough away. I'm giving, I'm spoiling it, but. 
boom, dead, door open, protagonist dead. So it actually did open there on the first try, which I was really surprised about. I was not expecting to die and not expecting the door to open, and it also worked on the second try. I did this mission, like, the first couple times I did this mission, I think I tried like six or seven times before the door would actually open. I don't know what the deal was, but this time I got it both times, so that's it. So once you get out there, mission complete. Um, left a lot of loot, as you're going to see right here. Yep, about 600, which I guess isn't too bad, but, you know, for like the most part, like I said, this going forward, we're not really going to need much loot. Um, so that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments or through a private message or whatever. Thank you so much uh, for watching. Stay tuned.